When it's hot outside, here's a fun photo shoot idea that you can pull off with your family, your friends, in your backyard, and on the cheap. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, friends? My name is Pai. Welcome to Adorama TV. Okay, so a while back, I saw Tim Tatter do an incredible series of water balloon portraits where he was shooting essentially water hats on people using gels and cool lighting and all sorts of stuff. It's fantastic. I don't know if he was the first, but he was definitely the first person that kind of inspired me to this. Now, this past week in California, it was super hot. And instead of just doing a regular photo shoot with the kids, I thought, let's do a Tim Tatter inspired water hat shoot. But here's the thing for my shoot, I wanted to take this and make it very relatable to each of you. So we're going to be using inexpensive items for the entire shoot. Our backdrop is going to be a black bed sheet. We're going to use a simple backdrop stand, but you can use chairs if you like and use the camera that you already have. This means if you just have your phone, you can still pull this off with just your phone. But if you have a mirrorless or DSLR, that's going to get you the best results. So let's go ahead and dive in. Step one, choose a hot day with midday sun. Let's not have our children freezing in winter as we pop water over their heads. So look, I know we try to avoid midday photo shoots, but honestly, for this technique, you want it to be midday sun with just a slight bit of light direction. And I'm gonna explain why in just a moment. So we're shooting right around 11 a.m or 1 p.m. So just after noon, where you have a little bit of direction in the sunlight. Step two, set up your backdrop. Now, if you have a black cloth background, then great, use it. But if you don't, just grab a black bed sheet. And that's exactly what we're doing here. Now, I have a backdrop stand. And if you plan to shoot more photographs, I would recommend picking up one. They're fairly inexpensive, less than 100 bucks on Adorama.com. You can pick up a backdrop stand. But if you don't want to get one, then you can just hang the bed sheets onto, say, bar stools or anything high that you can basically clamp it down to. Step three is your angle of light. So you want to make sure that your backdrop is placed against the sun. So you want to be shooting your images into the sunlight. Now we chose a midday sun because with that high angle to it and just a slight angle coming down onto our backdrop, what happens is your subject will be entirely backlit like you can see here, but the backdrop itself is going to be in shade. That's what we want. And this is easier to do in midday sun versus later in the day, because once the sun comes at a direction, it's going to cast a very long shadow and you have to really separate the subject from the background quite a bit. Okay. So step four, let's talk camera settings. I shot these on this guy, the EOS R. This has a, I believe eight frame per second frame rate when shooting stills max. Okay. It's good. But if you have something that's even higher, like Sony cameras have a ridiculous frame rate. And I know the new, like R5 can do like 20 frames a second, whatever, the more, the better for this, because you want to be able to pick out that perfect frame, but something that has five to eight is going to work. You're just going to have to repeat the process a few times to get the perfect frames out of the camera. So we want to set it to the highest frame rate possible. That's step one. Next, we need to choose a fast shutter speed. One four thousandth of a second is good. One eight thousandth of a second is better. I would also recommend stopping down the aperture a bit so you can get a little more depth. If you shoot this at like F2, well, the problem is that the water beads that are directly in front and behind, they're going to be all blurred out completely and you don't have all that cool detail. So somewhere around F4, F5, 6, if it's very bright outside and you go to F7, 1, that's even better. Okay. So stop down the aperture to get a little more sharpness and more detail in the water. Then last, you're going to use ISO to basically get you to the right exposure. Now I want you to make sure that based on the camera that you're using, the ISO setting is not going to reduce quality too much. We're in midday sun, but I'm actually bumping this to 1600 ISO on the EOS R, but I know at 1600 ISO, I'm still going to get really good files out of this camera. So I'm good to go. So remember to keep the shutter speed that fast and to stop down the aperture, even in midday sun, you're going to have to raise the ISO a bit, just depending on how bright it is. The first time we did this was direct midday sun. The second time I did this was a little bit of overcast. So I had to raise the ISO a bit more the second time. It was like two stops more. So I think on the first day when we had a hard direct sunlight, I was able to do this at like ISO 400, but on the second day it was 1600 ISO. 
Now, if you're using your phone for this, you totally can. You can do all of this with just an iPhone. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide the shutter to the left to go into burst mode, and you're gonna shoot this with burst mode as we queue up the action, essentially. Are you gonna get similar results? Yes. Are they gonna be ideal? Not really, because on the iPhone, you don't necessarily have control over shutter speed, unless you're using, say, a third-party app, but then you lose Apple's kind of computational photography and the quality of the image. So you can use your iPhone if it's a bright day, then you're gonna get better results. If it's a cloudy or overcast day, with a phone you're not gonna get as good a result because the phone is gonna automatically start dropping the shutter speed, but it's still doable. Step five, it's time to have fun, pop the balloons. So I grabbed a bunch of balloons, it's literally called bunch of balloons on Amazon. There are these cool, I wish these things were around when we were kids, right? When you guys were kids, it was one at a time putting them on the hose. Like you want to fill up a hundred of these things. You had to invest four hours of your day to prepare for this, this water balloon fight. Well, now with like bunch of balloons or whatever, you know, other ones you can find like it, you basically put a hose attachment on and it's already ready to go. All these balloons are rubber banded onto this hose attachment. You pop it on, you fill them up and it's essentially filling like 30 to 40 balloons at once. So I just popped them into a bucket and then you're good to go. So at this point, have a family member, a friend, a spouse, hold one of the balloons over your subject's head. You wanna have them prep with the needle so that they're basically right over the head and the needle is close and you want it to be just out of frame of the camera. From the photographer's perspective, this is where you wanna make sure you've locked focus, all your settings are dialed in, you have everything, and then you're gonna cue the action. Now you could count three, two, one, but then we noticed that when we did that, the subject would kind of anticipate the drop and we wanted their eyes to be open, we wanted to catch like unique expressions during it. So what we ended up doing was, I just told Justin, when you hear my shutter start clicking, then just pop the balloon. So as soon as he hears the rapid firing of the shutter, he would just pop the balloon and we'd get a better reaction in our subjects. So you're gonna spam the shutter by just holding it down, shooting rapid fire through the whole sequence, and then you're gonna pick out your favorite frames later. Run it back, make sure you got the perfect expression with the perfect water. And if you didn't, I'm gonna show you a little trick. Well, you guys can actually jump back to a previous video that I did on Adorama TV, where I show you how to swap facial expressions. We actually took one of the images from the shoot, and I show you how to kind of blend expressions between two shots, as well as how to edit to get to the final results. That's it, here are some of the final images. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, I'd love for you to follow us here on Adorama TV. When you subscribe to the channel, make sure you turn on notifications. Otherwise, all the awesome videos and content that goes up, well, you're not gonna be notified of them. Meanwhile, please like the video and comment below. Let me know what you guys would like to see next, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.